This is the Avaya Podcast Network. APN. Technology, news, and information. All in one place. This is the E911 Talk Podcast, episode 96, for Monday, August 6, 2012. Welcome to this edition of E911 Talk with your host, Mark Fletcher, Pilot Line Manager for Emergency Services at Avaya. Now, here's Fletch. I think it's safe to say that even someone not involved in technology today will agree that voice and the way we communicate has radically changed. One of the most common questions I get asked is, when do I think that next generation 911 will become a reality? Although many people in the industry say five years, 10 years, or even more, I think it's more important to sit back and look at the evolution of technology that has occurred the past decade alone. That certainly changes that answer to be something that is very different. For example, I think it's fair to say that Twitter is a big part of everyone's life today, regardless of the fact if they actually tweet or not. It has become a part of our daily lives and our culture. So much, in fact, that many people today wonder why you can't send a text message or a tweet to 911. So at the same time that people are saying that next generation 911 is 5 to 10 years out, they're forgetting that Twitter is barely 6 years old, with its humble start back in March of 2006 by Jack Dorsey. Just this past February, it was reported that Twitter surpassed 500 million registered users. Were there naysayers back in March of 2006 saying, quote, that tweeter thing is never going to fly, unquote? Well, I'm sure that there were, but millions saw value, and it became one of those icons of modern pop culture. For many of us, it was our first introduction to social media. I can remember that just after Y2K, we started to play around with IP telephony in a serious way. Although voice over IP transport existed at the network level for quite some time already, and by that I mean packetized voice over an internet protocol-based transport, voice over IP to the desktop was still a rarity and very much a lab project for many companies. The network folks thought that voice over IP was the next best thing since sliced bread and easily managed as just another application at the network layer. If you ask them their opinion, they would tell you that IP telephony would completely replace the legacy TDM voice architecture in just a matter of 5 to 10 years. Now, if you turn around and ask the legacy TDM person the same question, they would argue that the requirements of voice on an IP network were too challenging for many applications, and that traditional voice would be around forever. As in most things, the truth lies somewhere in the middle. True, in most applications, mission-critical voice needs to be carefully engineered with the appropriate resiliency, redundancy, and quality of service characteristics before you just toss it into the cloud. However, there are so many advantages to IP-based telephony that, even with the additional cost to ensure mission-critical service, there was still tremendous savings potential as networks were able to flatten, consolidate, and extend their reach. At the residential level, voice over IP is common today in most metropolitan areas. So common, in fact, that there is no perceivable difference to the end user. Once that paradigm shift took place, voice over IP became commoditized. And with the commoditization of voice over IP, all the hype and the drama went away. I think it's safe to say today, the device that has revolutionized the way we communicate is the tablet. Your fingers became your mouse, and even the tactile keyboards ultimately gave way to smooth glass. From a size perspective, the iPhone is probably one of the leading examples of a tablet device. On the back end of that device is wireless access in either the public or Wi-Fi environment. In either case, the device is on the network and has access to network resources, such as voice over IP. When size became a factor, would have become quote, normal-sized tablets, such as the iPad and iPad 2, made their way onto the scene with more desktop real estate. Once again, an Ethernet-based device connected to the network running applications for voice over IP. Avaya saw this trend and came out with the Flare experience. Whether you're on a device you hold in your palm, a tablet in front of you, or even a Windows desktop environment, voice has not only become an application on the network, but an application on your device. Once the general population starts to accept this paradigm shift in communications, I believe you'll see communications becoming a part of any device that has connectivity to any network. How does this all tie into E911? Well, if you have a device and you can communicate with others on that device, especially others in the general public, somewhere, someone will need to make an emergency call on that device. 
This is where next generation enabled emergency services is not only going to be desired, but absolutely mandatory and from a citizen's perspective, is going to be required as they communicate over new and emerging modalities of technology. Six years ago, none of us even knew what a tweet was. In about five minutes, this article will reach hundreds of people around the world in an instant using that exact same technology. Based on the speed of adoption of that technology, when do you think the next generation 911 will be here? It might be sooner than you think. You've been listening to the E911 Talk Podcast with your host, Mark Fletcher, Product Line Manager for Emergency Services at Avaya. E911 Talk is a weekly podcast available on sites like this, as well as iTunes, and is available free of charge. If you have any comments or questions, you can email Fletch at FletcherM at Avaya.com. That's Fletcher, the letter M, at Avaya.com. Be sure to listen in next week for more informative topics on E911. 911, the line is recorded. What is the exact location of your emergency? This is the Avaya Podcast Network. APN.